Hello everybody and welcome to this Reality Capture Software Innovation webinar with myself Paul Burrows from Leica Geosystems and I hope you enjoy today's session. So firstly let's start with an agenda, we'll have a brief intro as we are doing now then we'll look at the Reality Capture Software Innovation updates uh, so that includes some licensing changes, new features, we'll look at the new Cyclone Field 360 variants, the new Cyclone uh, Register 360 Plus and BLK edition and then we'll do a deep dive into Cyclone Field 360 updates, uh, a deep dive again into Cyclone Register 360 Plus updates. So we'll do a very brief 2022 feature summary, and then we'll dive into the new features of our 2023 release. And then we'll have a summary and close. So that's the brief agenda for today. So as you probably know, hopefully, my name is Paul Burrows. I work for the Reality Capture Division. I've been with the company 16 years now, and I've got a focus on um, reality capture software and also autonomous technology, but also playing, paying close attention to uh, machine learning and AI and how we can apply those technologies to our technology stack in the future. Now, if you have any questions during today's session, um, you have a little widget that you can click the box and drop a question in there. We'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can with any responses, but feel free to ask as many questions as you want and we'll endeavor to get back to you really, really quickly. So firstly, why are we making these changes? How are we making them and when will they happen? So why are we making them? As a team, we have decided and we have a vision that we would like to bring uh, what we consider traditionally office-based workflows to the field without the complication of licensing. And we will explain in detail how we do that today. We also have the ambition to provide the full strength of our Leica software capabilities to pre professionals, regardless of which um, you know, scanning solution they might be using. And we've made some changes to our portfolio to allow that happen uh, to happen. How are we doing that? Well, our publishing products, firstly, are being restructured. Secondly, we're adding new capabilities to both Cyclone Field 360 and Cyclone Register 360. And we will also have a new offer for registration products in the field and in the office. And like I said, we will go through that in detail during the presentation. When is this happening? This is happening now. So products that are supporting these changes are being rolled out as we speak. And uh, I'm sure they will bring many, many positive advantages to you as a business. So what are the main changes? Firstly, Cyclone Publisher is getting integrated into our other products. So Cyclone Register 360 Plus, which is effectively a new offering, is a complete professional solution which contains all the, the functionality of Cyclone Publisher plus some additional features we'll talk about. And Cyclone Field 360 becomes the entry level solution for processing data, which means that some users may not even touch an office based workflow if that's their desire. So before, at the entry level, we had Cyclone Register 360, BLK edition. And for a professional user, you had Cyclone Register 360 or the BLK edition paired with Cyclone Publisher. Now, a user can have Cyclone Field 360 with in-field registration and data export. And then there's an intermediate offering, which would be Cyclone Register 360 plus BLK edition, which supports our BLK sensors. And then for a professional user, they may use Cyclone Register 360 plus which again incorporates all of our publisher capability into that solution. There's also something today we'll introduce to called Cyclone Workflow, which is the replacement for Cyclone Publisher Pro, but we'll explain that in a later slide. So Cyclone Field 360, the new entry point to class leading registration in the field. So you can now capture and, and complete your entire project entirely in the field if you wanted to. So you can capture, register and publish a complete project entirely from the, uh, a phone or a tablet without ever processing in the office, if that's your decision. So this is a, com a completely new workflow, which we've obviously um, devised. We've added functionality to our Field 360 implementations to allow you to deliver your projects quickly and communicate with other collaborators and other uh, stakeholders without leaving the field. And it genuinely is the next generation of registration for the next generation of reality capture user. And what you'll notice is, you know, we are selling now to a completely different type of customer. Obviously, existing customers, legacy customers and surveyors. But there's more and more what we would say non-surveying type customers who are investing in our technology. And this helps transition them into using this technology. So firstly, uh, we have what we call Cyclone. Field 360 Basic. Now this uses the on-device LiDAR 
only for the, from the Apple Pro devices. So there's Cyclone Field 360 Basic. We can, um, we can scan our uh, positions, we can merge that data together, and then we can export in a variety of formats ready for use in other applications. Or, of course, we can import that data directly into um, our, our first or third party solution, so Cyclone 3DR, um, or as you can see, any third party applications that would support those data formats. And of course, if the authoring product supports it, you would be able to see the sitemaps, geotags, assets, and that other information that's collected with Cyclone Field 360 Basic. We've then also introduced Cyclone Field 360 BLK Edition. This works only with the BLK 360 and in the near future, the BLK to go. So here's Cyclone Field 360 BLK Edition. Again, you can uh, export your data in a variety of formats. You can scan, you can register. Um, you can go directly out to TrueView Cloud if you want to as well, which is something you can do from that offering. Um, again, supporting all of the functionality that you would have uh, from Cyclone Field 360, and we can then deliver that data into our downstream softwares. So that's Cyclone Field 360 BLK Edition. There's also Cyclone Field 360, which uh, supports all the sensors and gives you all the capability of both Field 360 BLK Edition and Field 360 Basic. So now let's look at Register 360. So this is all about enriching the registration workflow with new publishing capabilities. So you can now refine your projects in the office to tighten a registration, clean up noise, do classification. That's something we've added to the new or will add to the new version of Register 360 and more. All of your tags and your assets in the field are available to all users and stakeholders within Cyclone Register 360 Plus. So obviously you can communicate notes and important information between the field and the office. Plus you can publish LGS data, RCP and more without any additional licenses. And I'm going to explain now how we do that. And of course LGS and RCP mean that it's easy to integrate with Leica and Autodesk solutions and downstream products. Um, so really what we're doing here is trying to make this as simple as possible for you to not only um, collect and process the data, but to deliver it downstream to your stakeholders in the business. So let's look at what Cyclone Publisher was in 2022. Um, so obviously we had Register 360 and BLK Edition, and you would have the addition of Cyclone Publisher. Then we would be able to push the data out to an LGS format or maybe even to Cyclone Enterprise. Some of you may be using Cyclone Enterprise. And of course, all of these different types um, of information will be included in that LGS file. Or if you, you know, drag and drop an LGS file to Cyclone Enterprise or publish directly, you would have access to that information. And then we can deliver that data. We can obviously stream the data from Cyclone Enterprise or we could import an LGS file, drag and drop you know, directly into any one of these uh, solutions like you know, TrueView Desktop, Cloudworks from various CAD products um, or Cyclone 3DR. In 2023, what are we doing is we are basically liquidating Cyclone Publisher and we're moving the features into Register 360 Plus and Register 360 Plus BLK Edition. Um, in addition, what we are doing is we are adding panoramic uh, image export as part of that. Um, so it's added free of charge. And if you are a Register 360 Plus user, you will maintain access to Cyclone Register. So we know there's quite a few customers who want to continue to use Cyclone Register. And for that, you know, this, this is how we will support that. OK, so that's the nice cleaned up slide for 2023. So what about if you're moving from Cyclone Publisher Pro to what we call Cyclone Workflow? And this is all about maximizing your downstream workflow. So in 2022, we had Publisher Pro. So of course you'd have, uh, again, Register 360 or BLK edition with Publisher Pro. And that would allow you to publish to LGS um, or Cyclone Enterprise with the added benefit of some additional features over and above Publisher, which were um, you can push out the panoramic images as JPEG and the XR with all the positional information. You could also um, add and append models to your LGS files, so OBJ files, COE files, IFC files, pull them into um, the solution. And you could also use TrueView VR when you would publish data using Cyclone Publisher Pro. Um, and then, of course, you would continue to consume your data in those various um, you know, either first party uh, solutions or potentially it may convert and use it into third party and other third party solutions. So that now is the cleaned up um, view, but we are going to re rename Cyclone Publisher Pro Cyclone Workflow. 
so we have all of that added capability plus any new future releases and updates will come within Cyclone workflow. So we won't see any changes to Cyclone um, you know, Register 360 Plus in terms of additional export types or support because of the publisher inclusion. But what you'll now see is um, all the additional feature sets and updates will come within Cyclone workflow. So that's the cleaned up slide of what it will look like now going forward in 2023. Okay, so what is the state of play today? And what does the Leica Geosystems Reality Capture software portfolio now look like? So I wanted to break this down into uh, basically the core capabilities um, for field and office, and then obviously look at the optional add-ons that are available for each of these, uh, you know, each of these stages effectively. So initially, again, if you've got an Apple Pro device and you just want to work with LiDAR, then there's Cyclone Field 360 Basic. So that can be bought as a standalone license. There's various export options with some forthcoming in the future. And of course, there is the ability to add Quick Plan. Now, Quick Plan, if you haven't already used it, it gives you the capability to create floor plans and basic 3D models and export that in DXF and IFC format. Then if you're a BLK scanner user, you may not want to use the office workflow. You maybe just want to do everything in the field. So this is where Field 360 BLK edition comes in. Again, you can buy that um, as a standalone offering. It also works with the on-device LiDAR. So you can combine on-device LiDAR and the BLK sensors, plus uh, a range of exports. And you can also add the quick plan functionality to that. And we'll explain a little bit more about quick plan in a second and how you can also activate that using some other licenses. Then if you're a BLK scanner user, and you want to use the office workflow, then of course you could use Register 360 Plus BLK Edition. Now, not only has this now got all the added capability of publishing, as I described earlier in the presentation, uh, we've added classification now to Register 360 and Plus Edition uh, and BLK Edition. Uh, you get access to five seats of Cyclone Field 360 BLK Edition, and of course you've got the various exports there. Now what you can do now is add additionally Cyclone Workflow, which gives you all the added benefits of Cyclone Workflow, which was previously Cyclone Publisher Pro. And of course you could also add Quick Plan to that as well. And if you're a high-end scanner user and you want to be able to use all of the sensors that we have, so P-Series, RTC, and the BLK devices plus on-device LiDAR, then you could go for Register 360 Plus, which gives you access to Cyclone Field 360, of course, again, you get your, um, you know, your five seats with the various export options as well, plus all the cool new features that we've discussed, you know, bundle adjustment, additional links, the slicing tool. And of course, you could add Cyclone Workflow to that bundle as well or Quick Plan. Now, what I wanted just to quickly highlight is that you can add Quick Plan as a costed solution. But if you've got Cyclone 3DR Pro or Cyclone 3DR AEC edition, you will get access to Quick Plan free of charge as part of uh, having that license. So that's just something that I wanted to bring to your attention. So what about licensing for permanent and subscription software? So what do all these changes mean for you? And that's really the most important part of the presentation. So if you have permanent licenses, um, maybe you don't have CCP or you do have CCP, this shows the two routes. Effectively, if you don't have CCP for any reason, you don't get support, you don't get updates, but your license will continue to work, but you won't have access to all these new features. If you are paying CCP and that is a, a lot of you, then we'll re, we will migrate you to the new licenses at the time of CCP renewal. So this is what this looks like. I'm just gonna go through very briefly now um, what this means for you. So if you're a Cyclone Register user, there is a free path to Cyclone Register 360 Plus, and you keep access to Cyclone Register crucially. Uh, but although there is new CCP pricing, so you'll have to talk to um, your representative to get that information. If you're a Cyclone Register 360 user, there is a free path to Cyclone Register 360 Plus, but you'll note there's some uh, new CCP, CCP pricing. If you're a Cyclone Register 360 BLK Edition user, there's two options. You can go for a paid uh, route to expand the capability and move to Cyclone Register 360 Plus, which opens up all the different sensor types and third-party sensors. Or you could go down the free route, which just takes you to Cyclone Register 360 Plus BLK Edition. Of course, in both those situations, there's also new CCP pricing. If you've got Publisher, Cyclone Publisher, 
all of that will be migrated. And you'll note there that we've also, uh, you can also see publishing capability added to Cyclone 3DR and Map360. Um, so we will we'll, uh, talk, to, talk to you about how that process will happen, but it's uh, nice and simple. If you're a Cyclone Publisher Pro user, there'll be a free path to Cyclone Workflow, which I've discussed, uh, and some new CCP pricing. So that gives you an overview of the permanent license situation. Now, if you're a subscription user, and there are increasingly more and more people um, actively taking on our subscription offer, your existing subscription will not renew. Um, so after the active subscription period, we uh, will basically provide you a new subscription for the new products. So again, here we have an overview, and I've not put pricing on here specifically because there's different prices in different regions for lots of different reasons. Um, so you can work with your local sales teams to work out what this means for you. So if you're a Cyclone Register user, there is a price increase to move to Cyclone Register 360 Plus. But of course, if you subscribe, you maintain access to Cyclone Register. If you're a Cyclone Register 360 user, there is a price increase to go to Cyclone Register 360 Plus. If you're a Cyclone Register 360 BLK edition user, there's a few options again. There's a price increase to go to Register 360 Plus, a price increase to go to um, Register 360 Plus BLK edition, or if you want to maintain this in-field offering um, and do all of your work in the field, then there is uh, it's basically the same price to move from Cyclone Register 360 to Cyclone Field 360 BLK edition. Um, Cyclone Publisher, as you know, we've discussed is a, the part is liquidated and moved into the other products, so you haven't got to worry about that. And if you are a Cyclone Publisher Pro subscriber, there is a new lower price for Cyclone Workflow. Um, so the subs renewal price is actually lower in that instance. So please talk to your salespeople uh, to get the relevant information and make sure that you are moving to the right product at the right time um, for the right price, of course. Okay, so now we've gone through the reorganization and looking at the innovation that's happening in 2023. Let's look at Cyclone Field 360 and we're going to talk about the new variants, uh, Field 360 Basic, BLK Edition, obviously Field 360. So um, this is all about, our new release is all about empowering field workflows. So we've added the ability to add in um, additional links and close loops. Uh, we've added um, an improved level of detail for linking and alignment views, um, slicing tools, bundle optimization. We've also got a backup and restore using what we call a FAF file field archive file, um, plus a new uh, lightweight preview object mode for the all new BLK360, HD mode for LiDAR data, plus various other bug, uh, bug fixes. And then we'll also touch on um, a summary and outlook at the end of the session as to where we're heading with the field workflows. So let's talk about how we're empowering field workflows with Cyclone Field 360. So the first thing is, as I said in that brief introduction, is looking at redundant links and closed loops. So with Field 360 4.1, users can now calculate redundant links um, that, that can form closed loops and you can also optimize bundles. So the idea is that we're able to deliver a more accurate registration directly in the field um, and then a user, once they've done the bundle adjustment, is able to export that as an E57, uh, PTX, and, or of course, as HXDR becomes av available, you'll be able to push data directly from Field 360 in the field up into the cloud uh, to perform additional functions, whether that's meshing or uh, you know, basically creating tools or analysis directly in the cloud. So that's uh, the power behind Field 360. So the first thing that we've done is improve the level of detail in the linking mode. So you can see that from the image here. So it, we always use kind of like this silhouette mode to um, obviously enable us to throw around a lot of data on these on the iPad or Android devices. But we've managed to optimize the memory usage and you can see now we've got a lot more de uh, data in the linking view that enables a much, much smoother operation for the end user. We've also increased the level of detail in the alignment mode. So this is similar, um, you know, we, as you have seen the visual alignment mode in Cyclone Register 360 is very similar on the tablet. But again, we've improved the amount of data that you can see. It makes it easier to align. It makes it clearer. Um, and then you're ready to optimize and create links in that view. 
So one of one of the uh, new tools that we've added, and this is a fantastic tool if you're used to using our desktop solutions, is a slicing tool. Now this isn't true slicer; it's not quite the same. Although we will add functionality over time to you know color the uh, scans by position, for example. But we've now got this simple slicing tool that allows us very very quickly to move up and down the data. Um, and, and pick the, the right location for where we're going to do our analysis. So you can see here we can do that in the top down, top down view as well and this is in the obviously the visual alignment uh, method so in exactly the same way we can just invoke the slice and we can start working with the data. We can also do the same in the 3D view so this video will show us doing exactly the same in the 3D view and again you just move this little icon up and down so that's a really nice feature nice and smooth and we can also do it in side alignment so depending on the complexity of your job, you can mix and match those tools to get the absolute best results from your Field 360 um, optimization. Okay. So now I'm going to show you this the ability to close the loop. So you can see here what we're going to do now is just join and close 21 and 14, those two positions. So firstly we go into um, the linking mode, the visual alignment mode, and you can see there the two that we're going to link. We're going to optimize and create that link and then that now is done. We've added that link and we've closed the loop. It really is that simple. But the next step is obviously to optimize that bundle. Now what you'll see here is when we click on the bundle view and there's a little um, hazard warning sign next to optimize bundle. Now you click that, it will go and optimize the bundle. I've seen this done on jobs with up to about four or five hundred scans and now that warning sign is gone. So that's now optimized the bundle that's now ready to start. Um, exporting and uploading. So how do we know if a bundle is not optimized? So what you what you will see is if a bundle is not optimized, if you select it, we have what we call a toast message which pops up from the bottom of the screen and it will tell you that it's not been optimized. Secondly, when you click the go into the uh, menu tab on this right hand side and you click opt it will say optimize bundle, you have a little hazard warning sign next to it to show that it hasn't. Um, and then if you try to export and you haven't optimized, you'll also have a warning which will pop up. So that's a really nice little way of indicating that the job needs to be optimized before you then perform your other operations. Okay, so um, how do we empower, again, more field workflows of uh, exporting uh, these bundles that we've created? Obviously, we can use the sync server method, if you've used that before, between your iPad device and Register 360. You can export bundles in E57 or PTX and then obviously take that into a third party solution or a first party solution if you want to. We can upload bundles to HXDR and that functionality will come when HXDR is released. It's working in, in beta for people right now if you have access. Um, but ultimately that is something that is going to be very powerful. And then we've also got, and we'll talk about this in detail shortly, this field archive file. So this is the ability to back up and restore jobs from the tablet. So if you back up and restore to a field archive file, you can actually also, if you get the field archive file, you can drag and drop that into Register 360 ready for importing if you want to. So there's complete flexibility in the way that you work with your data. So let's now look a little bit more into how we support Office workflows with the new release. This is perhaps one of the biggest things that people will maybe take from this release. I, I really am very impressed with what we've done here. So this is the ability to back up and restore projects. So this is a very easy and convenient way to share data between the field and the office or send data between Field 360 users, so from one iPad to the next. You, know, you can even use AirDrop between two devices if you want to. Uh, you can send the data directly to uh, Register 360, like I said before. Um, and of course, it's a way to store the data in a compressed way that you can then access later on if you want to. So you can see in the uh, Project Viewer, there's the ability to back up the file in the, in the, uh, the top right hand side. And then again, within the information tab, you can click and there's a little button that says restore. We're going to go through that process in a second of the full um, import and export of these field archive files as well. So um, firstly, you should know, so at these FAF files, field archive file can be shared as a standard zip file. So if you want to compress it further, you can and unpack it. Um, obviously, they're still they're quite highly compressed as they are. So from field 360, we would back up the job and you have your FAF file. And then you could share that via email, via uh, you know copying to local storage, or you could upload that to the cloud. You know, like I said, ideally maybe you go and buy uh, Dropbox or something like that potentially, and share that to other users. Um, or if you've got it on local storage, or if you've got it from another source, you can then just drag and drop into um, Field 360. Or of course, you can 
re-import and restore that data into Field 360. So there's so much that you can do with this Field Archive file, but we'll talk a little bit more about why there's major benefits in doing this, uh, particularly because it avoids maybe creating a Wi-Fi connection or a cable connection to a device. Because if you back up the whole data set as a Field Archive file, you can then just drag and drop that into Field, uh, sorry, and register 360 and start working with the data. So they're a convenient way to share data between the field and the office. And you can also share the data without the need of having the device um, or the scanner back in the office. So for the BLK360 and the all new BLK360, the full point cloud data can be stored in the field archive file. So there's no need to necessarily bring that back to the office. So um, in terms of a backup of the data, users can create a full backup. There's no need to keep the jobs on the mobile device at all if you don't want to. So you can re then remove it and create space on that mobile device. Or of course, as I said before, you can import that directly to register 360 plus. So this decouples the download and the import because now we can say create a field archive file. It creates it. We then transport that to register 360 and we can start working with that data. Um, and here's how we now create that backup file. It's, it's super simple. So firstly, when we're in um, field 360, we do a long pro press on the job and then we select the job for backup. So you can see we're just with the blue tick enabled. Then we tap on the backup button on the top right hand side, and then we choose where we want to store our FAF file. That could be, like I said, this could be directly saved to files on the device. You could save it to your iCloud drive, to Dropbox, to OneDrive. You can airdrop this to another device. It's entirely up to you how you want to work. So this could be that you know maybe you've got a couple of people on site with different jobs and you want to be transferring them between devices. The choice is entirely yours. Um, so if we wanted to restore a job, so this is if we're now importing onto a new device, we click, oh, so here you can see we've got a blank um, bank of jobs in our job browser. We click import, we click import backup data, and then we select the field archive file that you want to restore, and then it will just bring that through. Now, that this contains a lot of information in the you know, field archive file. So you can see here, and this is really important for us to understand, actually. So if you've collected with the Apple LiDAR sensor, the full point cloud data will be stored. For a BLK360 and the all new BLK360, um, you can have the full point cloud data. And for the latter, we've also got an LWPO option, which is lightweight preview object. And I'll explain um, how that impacts you in a second. For RTC360, LT and ScanStation P-Series, we only access the LWPO. Because of the way that we work with the scanner, uh, we are looking at ways in the future to bring more data from the RTC360 across to the tablet. So that is something we're looking at, uh, but it is all really dependent on the specification of the tablet. So your field archive file contains a complete database of the Cyclone Field 360 job, including the scan data, any links, any tags, any measurements, anything you've done in that project, all the geotags are stored within that field archive file, which means, as I said before, when you pull across, if you did to register 360, all of that would be present. Multiple jobs can be stored in one FAF file. That's also fantastic news for you. So imagine you've done three smaller jobs in a given day. You can back up a single uh, field archive file and then you can restore that to another device or drag and drop into um, registry 60 or just archive it. So that's something to know. And as you can see, field archive files can go into register 360 plus or back into Cyclone Field 360 4.1, which was the release a couple of weeks ago. Now, here's something I want to highlight. When we collect data, particularly within the all new BLK360, the original um, plan, I guess, was that all of the data came across the device. But what users quickly realized that if they had a smaller um, capacity device, the space on the device filled up very, very quickly. So what we've added now is the ability to choose whether you have full data download or an LWPO download. That's a lightweight preview object. So for the all new BLK360, all of the data is downloaded, um, but this is now optional, of course, um, and the job can be imported into Register360 Plus um, using uh, Sync Server or the FAF file that we've discussed. So now we've got this new LWPO mode. So if the user disables the full data download, only the LWPA da uh, LWPO data is stored uh, in the job on the mobile device. Um, so this obviously allows you to save space and you can keep the full data on the on the scanner. And if you do that, you get this little small icon on the right hand side of the job that says LWPO to indicate that you're only looking at a portion of the data. Now, if full data download 
is disabled, the job will not be visible in Cyclone Register 360, so you would have to do that directly from the scanner. So that's something to consider for the specifically for the um, new BLK360. Now, if you wanted to switch between it, so you've you've had it on, so you've turned off the full data download, and now you want to bring the full data back. Um, if you disable full data download later, the, the, the data is deleted and only the LWPO is kept. If you enable full data download later, then it will all be downloaded, but you need a connection to the scanner in order to do that. So it doesn't mean that if you've chosen this option at the beginning, you're limited to seeing the LWPO data. You can actually bring that into um, the software later on. And then, of course, you've got backup, restore, export to E57 and publish to HXD or work for all the options but they will then use either the full or the LWPO data. So that's something um, that you need to consider if you do decide to use that mode. Now this is quite interesting. So this is, uh, you can see how very, very quickly if you were scanning with dense scans with BLK360 and HDR imagery, you'd very quickly fill up the space on your device as it's pulling across all that data. So look at the top line, for example, there. Five dense scans plus HDR. The full data on the mobile device is 14.8 gig. Um, if you have the LWPO, it's one gigabyte. So it's not only is it faster to transfer and get the data to the device, it's also you know, you're saving a lot of space. However, if you decide to back up that project, if you want all of the data, you're obviously going to need to do a full sync to get the data from the device across to um, uh, across to the tablet. But that just gives you an idea. When you get to the bottom line, five fast scans and no images it's neg negligible between the full data on the mobile device and the LWPO. So it might be if you're using those settings, you probably don't want to use the L um, LWPO mode, but that's something to be aware of. Okay, so um, other improvements. Um, we've now added what we call HD mode for LiDAR standalone functionality. This is device specific, so you would need an M1 or M2 iPad Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, but we get a lot more data now uh, within that capability. And of course, we can use that for gap filling as well as standalone um, capability. So you can see this is the normal mode and this is the HD mode. A lot more data, a lot prettier and a lot easier to uh, create infill for our projects. So here's the HD mode for uh, LiDAR gap filling. So we go into our job, we create a 3D tag, we align to our project and then once we've aligned to our project, we can start collecting our data. So there's our data, and now we just hit record, and we can start doing the infill. But of course, the infill is now in HD mode, not just standard mode, so we get a lot more data. Now, I don't know whether you've used this, and if you haven't used it, you really need to get a device to try it. But this is fantastic, where you either you can't get the scanner, or you've forgotten an area, but you can jump back into your 3D view, find areas where you need to infill, and then just go back and collect the data with the, uh, with the LiDAR sensor. And of course, if you've got, as I said, one of the newer iPad devices with more RAM, then you get the, you get more points, you get more data. So it actually makes a much denser cloud. You can see some of the, the density of data that we were demonstrating in that previous image there. Okay, um, something else we've added, the option to remove save scanners from the list. So with iOS, all you do is you just swipe left on a scanner and then you can remove it. And with Android, it's just a long press and then you can remove it directly from uh, the connections. And that was something that people were struggling with. So we've added that capability. So you can see we're just removing all of them one by one to be left with the scanners that we're actually interested in connecting with. Now, just a long, a sli well, I say a slightly longer term view, a midterm view, and just to cover where we have come from. So within version one, this was primarily aimed at uh, the RTC 360. Then we added support for the, the original BLK360 and also the P-Series in version 3. Then we added Quick Plan. If you don't, you don't know what Quick Plan is, um, you can, by all means you can get a demo. We talked about it in the initial start of the, um, the presentation. The ability to create IFC and DFX, uh, DXF models very, very quickly from our point cloud data directly on the tablet and then you can export those from the tablet. Um, then, of course, uh, we've got version 4.0 and 4.1. So this is you know, exporting clean data, field registered data to E57, HXDR, field archive files. And then as we look forward to version uh, 5, 
we're looking at adding support for the BLK to go. And we're also look at, looking at the first analysis workflows as well that we can do directly on the device, um, on, on the tablet. So things that you might be familiar with from Cyclone 3DR Touch Mode, for example, deviation reporting, clash management, those kind of tools. How can we bring those into the field experience? Now we're able to create fully registered data sets directly on our tablet. OK, and on that note, I would like to take us into the next section to talk about Register 360 Plus. OK, so in case you missed it, we added a lot of stuff in the last major release. And I'm not going to go through all of this because you can read it, you can take a screenshot, you can pause the video. But basically, you know, things like support for BLK to fly and BLK Arc, our new autonomous sensors, full support for unstructured data, we have a command line interface to push out BLK data to an E57 with trajectory information and imagery. Export to LAS, um, ability to support the high accuracy tilt uh, sent, uh, settings on the RTC360. Much larger project support. There's a whole heap of stuff we added last year. Now, most people are up to speed, whether it's through CCP or they're on subscription, they get the new version. But yeah, and, but unfortunately, some people do skip versions or miss versions. So just be aware of the stuff that we have added. We're going to go through that very briefly. So support for the new BLK360, big one, um, very, very, well, hugely popular device. Uh, and we've got a really nice workflow for that. Improved support for GNSS registration for BLK to fly because we have the GNSS capability built into the device so we can use that to put multiple scans together very, very easily. We added a re-observation functionality for BLK to go where you could scan the same area multiple times and use that to tighten the SLAM calculation. Automatic black and white target extraction for BLK to go. Creation of waypoints. So if you're using the BLK to go, you could do a long push on the button and it would create this additional waypoint that you could see within um, your project and of course support for lidar scans from iphone and ipad which has been really really popular and now of course we've got this entry level cyclone field 360 basic which just supports that capability so that's something to be aware of um, so as i said improve support for gnss registration for blk to fly so we just tick auto cloud on import you've got your scans and lo and behold your scans come together because this this job here will have done, been done from maybe five, six, even 10 different flights all kind of put together. But by using this functionality and the GNSS capability of the device, that job has come together almost um, or, you know, almost instantaneously. And then we can then perform any tightening of the registration um, and bundle adjustment further downstream in Registry 60. Again, automatic black and white target recognition uh, for the BLK to go. Obviously, people want to georeference their BLK to go scans. If you take a little bit more time passing those um, targets, it becomes much easier to actually do the extraction and then put the data on uh, you know, a coordinate system, of course. Now, reobservation. This is uh, this little checkbox within the general settings link. So you don't have to use it at all, but this now allows you to tighten up the um, slam calculation. So in addition to grand, the, in addition to the grand slam of the BLK to go, which is the imagery, the viz the LiDAR SLAM and also the inertial measurement unit, we're now using this reobservation, so you can actually do a double pass around areas to increase that. So I think there's a screenshot to show this. So if you've got maybe some slippage or some issue in alignment for a particularly long trajectory, then it will actually use the reobservation to recalculate and, and adjust the SLAM calculation, which is really cool. I said we added um, the LiDAR support, so now we have this specific version to support that, although it's included in, in the BLK edition and Cyclone Field 360 as well, um, plus this gap filling mode, which is really, really cool if you haven't tried using it. And of course, bearing in mind, not everyone uses the iPad, some people use the iPhone, which also got the LiDAR sensor. So, I mean, when you consider the power of being able to add this data uh, to your terrestrial laser scanning data, it, it really is a fantastic option. And as I said, we've got the gap filling mode, which we demonstrated through the video earlier on and the creation of the waypoints. So you can create additional waypoints um, in addition to any automatic waypoints that you specify on import as well. So let's now look at what we've added in the 2023 release. So that is this is now available. This was available um, at the beginning of the week. And uh, so firstly, classification. That's a big one. We had classification in Cyclone 3DR. We have classification in Cyclone Pegasus Office, and we now offer it directly within Register 360. 
We've now got data security for RTC 360 data with more to come. This requires its own whole one hour webinar really to discuss and I'm going to let the public safety team take this on because it is it is a huge feature for those guys. Uh, we've got the new limit li uh, minimize limit box which is really cool. Uh, we've got this ability to turn off the level conditions as we become uh, you know add more and more functionality like we had in Cyclone Core um, and the support for the new field archive format from Field 360 as well. That's just a, t a touch uh, and plus other features. So let's start with classification. So we can process the data into multiple classes. Um, it's fully exportable in the LGS format, which of course is now included in Cyclone Register 360 Plus and BLK Edition. And you can view those layers in TrueView Desktop. Or of course you can see those layers um, and open them up in Cyclone 3DR. So we've got a classification manager to manage the classes. So if you're using multiple solutions from us, we are using the same classification models across our different products. Um, and of course, you can make sure that you are using the same uh, the, the same um, classification model across each of those jobs, um, and it supports existing not just so not just at import, but we can go back to existing jobs and run the classification on that as well. And it is pretty rapid. I mean, you you do need a good machine. You will get a warning if you can't run it. There's a small executable you download to access the classification, um, but ultimately, it's you know it, it's very quick at what it does. Um, and of course, you've got the export and import of class names is also supported. And you can see that, that uh, on the screen. OK, now this is the one where I said we do need like a separate webinar. So this is new data security for the RTC 360. So if a user completes the data collection in the field and they have uh, they use the scanner to then sign the job. So the user then imports the job and register 360 automatically detects that the job is signed and verifies the job and then we create this very detailed uh, verification report which is also it's available separately but you can embed it within the LGS file as well so this says you know what happened to this you know what happened to the scanner the number of scans who collected the data um, you know the fact that it wasn't manipulated in any way shape or form so like I said there's a lot more detail to this which needs to be fleshed out as part of a separate session but if you're part of the public safety world and have been after this feature then by all means uh, look into this further. There's plenty of information in the release notes um, about this new functionality. Um, and of course the verification ceremony is also included in the registration report PDF, uh, which is something that people are after. We may see uses in this, I think, outside of the public safety sector, but at the end of the day, this is currently where we um, where are we looking at that information? The minimize limit box, uh, so we can create a limit box directly around the point cloud area. Um, when it's saved, you can see all the dimensions in the limit box. That's a new functionality we've added in the limit box manager. Um, and you can also use it in conjunction with the UCS tool and you can pull dimensions. So this is a new drop down option within the limit box functionality. Uh, I quite like it because whenever I create a limit box, I tend to create a small one and then I'll expand it. Whereas this will just wrap it to the data that is in front of you. And, you, and as you're aware, and if you've used this before, you can create multiple limit boxes. You can then see them further downstream in the LGS and you can turn them on and off. You can even export by limit box as well using certain function, uh, using certain formats. So the, the, the limit box capability is, uh, is really nice in the new version. This is the ability to um, apply the level condition or remove the level condition. So you can see here, we've got the option to turn it off um, for the dual access compensator enabled setups for P-series, C-series and the RTC360 with the high accuracy tilt setting. Um, and that obviously helps when you're registering um, when maybe high accuracy tilt is not helping in solver registration for any reason. Um, so I think maybe there's a slight tilt that needs to be resolved and for some reason it's not moving and uh, you want to manually reposition it, then you can turn that level condition off. We've also got the option, and this is for the new BLK360, to import the high quality imagery. Now this requires that you are connected to the original device, but this is equivalent to like when we added the, the, the 5K import option for the RTC360. This is giving you all the pixel information from the BLK360. So like I said, you'd need the cable connection, but you use that high quality image import and it will bring all of that data through into the project really useful and a lot of people will want that maybe they don't want the compressed imagery for some reason um, then we've also got a new ex, um, option in e57 export to support images in recap 
So I know a lot of people were having trouble seeing the imagery uh, further downstream if they were using the recap export. Of course, now the recap export is included in uh, Register 360 Plus and BLK edition, but you can see the little tick box, so for recap, and there's information in the help file, but be sure not to have that selected when you're just doing a standard um, E57 uh, for some reason. Um, so th th that is specific for the recap export. So just bear that, um, bear that in mind. Um, but obviously that's for the E57, uh, the E57 export, not the RCP export, so that's something to consider. And uh, more additional um, features. So the new field archive format, um, don't need to labor the point, we've discussed this in detail, but the ability to just drag and drop that backup data across. We've now got software analytics, which we've had in TrueView and Cyclone3DR for some time. But if you allow us to access that information, completely anonymized, but we um, have crash reporting as well now included. So if something happens in Register360, we'll immediately notify the product management team. But the software analytics genuinely help us improve the products and genuinely help us um, understand how people are using the product so that we can infer you know, where we need to make um, improvements first. So if you are able to, please allow software analytics because you know, there is no impact to you. It's all done in the background. Um, one other thing that we added, and this was at the request of a lot of people, was to turn off the capability to show suggested links once you've done a visual alignment. So this happened every single time. Every time you did a visual alignment, you get a flag and saying, we can find another X number of links. Do you wish to run them? By turning this off, that pop-up will not come up because a lot of people did sometimes hit it and maybe you'd be sitting waiting you know, dead time for it to find 10 additional links of which 10 links it didn't find. So uh, this is entirely up to you. But I quite like it because I would tend to just you know deep dive into the you know the visual registration, uh, visual alignment, and and then and then pull different scans together rather than trying to find automatic links. But that's entirely your choice. But it is a nice feature. And of course, Cyclone Core. We've got a new release of Cyclone Core 2023. Um, there's various bug uh, fixes applied to this release. Now remember what I said at the beginning. If you have Cyclone Register 360 Plus you get access to Cyclone Core. So if you're a Cyclone Core user, you can continue to use it. Um, and there's obviously certain features and functionality which have still not yet made it to Register 360. Uh, most has, as we kind of continue towards this path of parity between the two solutions. But fundamentally, Register 360 is now the most popular um, registration solution out of our portfolio. And, and that is what you know, most people are using based on you know, fact, hard facts and figures. Cyclone Core, um, I like to see it continuing to this, exist because I still use it occasionally, I'm sure you do. Um, but just be aware that you know, bug fixes are being applied and, and all of this information is available in the release notes. But certainly we're not just abandoning Cyclone Core because there is a lot of people who still like and use the product. So in summary, um, we've obviously looked at our innovation updates at the beginning, so that covered all the licensing changes and the new features. Um, then we did this deep dive into Cyclone Field 360 and the updates, and of course there's a lot there, but primarily you know, creating um, a registration solution in the field. So a user can scan and register in the field with being able to export a, you know, a completed project potentially, and we will add more functionality uh, registration reports and summaries and stuff directly to Field 360 over time. So, you know, bear in mind this is the first release where we've included this capability. Cyclone Register 360 Plus, um, loads of stuff. Again, like I said, I wanted to show the 2022 editions and 2023 editions, the big one, the top line one, you know, classification, um, field archive support, but loads of really nice kind of moves forward. And of course, you know, data hashing, data security for the RTC 360, primarily for the public safety market. Again, massively requested. Um, that's now in there. We, we, we didn't just rush that product out. We made sure that we listened to the market. We got had consult consultations with you know, very, very senior people within these public safety organizations to make sure that that was designed for maximum flexibility and maximum impact. Um, so that is a really important solution for us. Um, so again, 2022 summary and 2023 feature overview as well. And that's what we have covered today. And hopefully you found it very, very useful. There's a lot to get through. You will get a recording um, so you can review this. Um, but of course, 
what I would like to do is say thank you very much for attending. We had a huge number of registrations. This isn't about selling something. This is about awareness. This is about telling you what is happening and the reasons why it's happening. And I'm here to act as a conduit between the Reality Capture Division and our customer base to make sure that you get that information in as clear um, a view as possible. Now, we don't have all the time in the world. We could do even more webinars to break down into each, um, you know, each product, essentially. But that is where we are. There's, there's features and functions coming to Cloudworks. There's new Cloudworks variants on the horizon, which um, we can't talk about. But really, what I wanted to do today was try and get that into as compact a package of information as possible. And I hope that that has really benefited you and given you an understanding of the overall releases at the beginning of 2023, plus a look at that change in landscape and our change in philosophy around um, field registration, Cyclone you know, Register 360 Plus, the changing in the publisher mechanism from you know uh, publisher being included and then, then Cyclone Publisher Pro becoming Cyclone Workflow and how that impacts you and your business. So if they have got any questions, we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. If you, if you want information about pricing or updates or upgrades, then please contact your salesperson or your dealer and they will sort you out. But on that note, take care. Thank you very much for listening and we will see you very, very soon.